Now let's look at our let's look at our actually results right here. Go to solder fatigue. So there's a mistake that I made. And the mistake is if you look at this, the delta T of all these components are 55 degrees. And in reality, I know that is not true. If I go to my uh, pumping thermal cycling, you can see that, yeah, it goes from 10 degrees to 65 degrees, but this would be true if the board was going into a chamber. We know when components uh, heat up in calibration or whatever, when they're operating, the whole board from left to right, top to bottom, it doesn't go uh, from 10 degrees to 65 degrees. So what we did, we took a thermal image of our board and we put it in here, the thermal image.jpg and right click view file. And then we notice that the components in the middle gets heated up more than the components on the sides and even some components on these corners are are blue right there they're even on a cooler side second thing was that the, the uh, components go from 30 almost to up to 47 degrees not 65 degrees right some components are much cooler at 30 degrees so how can we overlay this information on sherlock board so all we need to do is right click on this image file edit properties and then Sherlock is going to ask us what kind of a file is this? So thermal map. So you just click on T to go to uh, thermal map and it's an image. And now is this image from the top side of the board, bottom side of the board or both? Let's just say both. Legend orientation vertical, because we need to later on tell Sherlock what each of these color uh, colors mean as far as the temperature goes. And then what is the minimum temperature? 30. What is the maximum temperature? 47. And what, is, what are we going to apply this to? We're going to apply this to, to this thermocycling pumping, which is going to be this guy. Now, if you notice, we have two settings here, pumping min, pumping max. If you apply to max, that means the temperature goes from 10 degrees. If you remember, we started at 10, 10 degrees to 65. So it goes from 10 degrees to whatever temperature this map is saying, which is what we want. If you apply to min, that means this will be minimum. So it will be minimum this temperature up to 65. So pumping TC max, save. And now we will go to the mapping tab here at the bottom. All we need to do is align the board first. As you may not see this, but at these corners, we have four blue nodes here. You have to just drag and drop them here. I'm gonna do it very, uh, quick and dirty and approximate. So we have to just align our board. All we are telling Sherlock now that the, the blue outline that we have, this is where the board is sitting approximately. I guess it's good enough. And then click done. And now we have to align the legend to tell Sherlock that blue is 30 degrees and red is like 47 degrees type of a thing. And then done and click save and here's the cool part let's go to our layer viewer let me minimize my screen here let me turn on my component now go to here there's a folder called thermal map turn it on look at this the thermal map is overlaid with our board now if you look at there will be a number popping up up here if i move my uh cursor on top of any of these components. You can see that this component is going from 10 degrees to 38 degrees. This one goes from 10 degrees to 41 degrees. This guy goes to 46 degrees, and that's how it works. Now, if I go back to my solder fatigue, let's rerun the solder fatigue. Edit properties, save and run. It's going to overlay this thermal map and sort of overwrite the temperature cycling that we had with this thermal map and run our analysis again. Look at this, it's all green. Right? Now we can see that my board is uh, passing my uh, life cycle criteria. And this U1 and U2, now uh, U1 is actually 
it's good, but U2 it has uh, a little less than 20 years of life. And then we can also go back to the layer viewer. Let me turn off my, uh, my uh, thermal image. Now you can see that on top of the list here, we have a bunch of new folders showing up. These are our FBA analysis results. So if I turn on the components that are yellow, I don't have anything red in solder fatigue, you can see that this component turned on. So you can sort of map the components on your board to see where the, these components are, right? And then we can see the FEA results as well. You can look at the uh, natural frequencies, right? You can see where the uh, displacements are. Or you can see uh, shock displacements, right? And shock strength. You can look at the uh, FEA scores. You can look at the shock on top. Let me turn off the uh, FEA result. And then you can see which components are green, which components are red or yellow. These are all green now, right? So this is uh, really good for you to figure out where these components that are failing are, that uh, where you do whatever you can do to fix the problem. And if the problem still uh, hasn't gone away, like in the scenario that we have the solder fatigue U2, then you can show these to your project managers and show them that you do have a uh, component selection problem. There's, you really cannot do anything to fix it. You can show them that you change the uh, location of the component, you change the uh, stack ups, like we did change the laminate property, but you still have failure, right? So in this video, we went over the basic training of Shrubo. We brought in an ODB file, we set up the board, we applied some load, ran analysis, reviewed the results, and then we went back and changed uh, properties on the board to see how we can address the problems. Thank you so much.